Okay, so what we are going to be looking at this week is keyword analysis. And I decided this semester to go a little bit easier on you guys. Last semester, as Sarah and Cameron can attest to, I made them spend two weeks here on analysis. They had to do, I believe it was 60 keywords that they had to analyze. We're gonna spend one week and you're gonna analyze 12. So if you do more, there's extra credit for all that are able to do extra and uh, really just dig in and see what is needed to rank on your website on. So this is what we'll be just talking about. First, I wanna just talk about a bit about your last week's assignment and your homework and just some of the issues that some of the people ran into with Google Trends. And then I want to dive into this week's assignment. This week, as I was sharing to some of the people that were already on, uh, is probably your more tricky week because there's a lot of little things you've got to do or you'll get the assignment wrong. And so I want to show you exactly how to do it. And you don't have to wait for this video to be done there's a video that's in the tutorials, which I'll point out when we get to it, that walks you through it as well, but it goes fast. And so I wanna just say, hey, here's the areas that last semester got really tripped up on. And then we're gonna talk a few things about your website. So that's what we're going to cover uh, for this week. Starting off, what did you guys find the most interesting thing about your own keyword research? and Let's have Sarah, why don't you start us off with just some of the insights that you had with Family Search? Um, most interesting to me was all of their keywords are declining. Like most of them, well, all of them actually aren't being searched as much as they were in 2004 and like rapidly declining, not just like slowly, but like very fast, which was interesting. I would agree. And I, I put a note on your assignment where Luckily for them, even though interest may be waning, the Lord's work will still, they'll still carry on. So they don't, it's not their business model, but it is fascinating because I do remember back 2004 is when I graduated from college. And the statistic that we heard all around was more people are searching for family history than for porn. I don't think that's the case anymore. Uh, in fact, I remember it was, I think it was probably 2007, 2008, I wrote an article how social media beat out, more people were doing social media than porn and family history. So yeah, it is definitely on its on the decline. Good. Mm -hmm. What other insights did you guys get from your own keyword research? It was so devastating. It was all dead. Look, most of the keywords that I thought were dead Okay, so we're gonna talk about that. That's the next thing we're gonna discuss about the data and the dead data, the no data found sort of thing. I wanna teach you just a, a quick way to see how accurate that may be. But I did notice with both you and Claire, so Flora and Claire are both working on OEO ties. And that was something you both noted was what you thought good keywords weren't. Or, they, or at least they weren't growing in the way that you thought they were. All right, so you guys kind of hit on the next slide that I wanted to discuss. And it sounds like a fair amount of you had no data searches. Is that correct? So one of the students who's not on the call right now, pretty much all of his were dead or no data found. And as I went and dug into it, I was like, you know, there's, there's a hack I want to show you here because the thing we don't know about Google Trends is where they cut off the no data. Like when we see some where they're like just kind of spiking down and there's not a lot of searches, that doesn't tell us anything. Is that like, oh, you only had a few searches in a month or in a year? We just don't know. So this is how, if you're wondering about a keyword that you're like, should I go after it? Because don't let this sort of data scare you. We, you've got to cut stuff out somewhere. You've got to say, I'm only going to focus on 
these sort of keywords, but there may be keywords like what Devin shared with me, 4K and 8K bring him a lot of money, even though there's not a lot of searches because those companies are willing to pay more. So I don't want to scare you away saying, oh, there was no data found on it, so I shouldn't focus on it. But this is how you can really figure out if it's a keyword worth going after. So Harold in the class, he's our photographer, and he was looking at two of these keywords here, Hawaii filmmaker versus Hawaii videographer. Both of these searches gave him no data. So I want to pull up here. If we take a look at these searches in Google, okay? So you first have to go to google.com. Don't just do it in the browser because it's not going to help us as much. And let's put in, let's just put in filmmaker right here. I want to search from here so I know what we're getting here. So with the SERP page, I'm going to put in Hawaii Filmmaker. Now, as we're doing this, we've already looked at Google Auto Suggest here. Notice how there's only one thing where it's Hawaii Filmmakers Collective. Now, the other one, the other keyword that we are comparing is videographer, okay? When you put that in, both of these have no data, but videographer shows a lot more with Google Suggest, which suggests that Google Videographer is part of the a bigger LSI graph. Now, you guys had LSI on your quiz, latent somatic indexing. Basically, these are all the keywords that it falls into. So we can see that there's a bigger graph than what we saw with Filmmaker. Filmmaker, there was only one, or Hawaii Filmmaker, there was only one. I just want to show this again. There was only one auto suggest, which tells us that the LSI graph on this is not worth going after. But if you see something like what we saw with videographer, Hawaii videographer, then that's a keyword I wouldn't be afraid of. Okay. Now, what we're going to focus on here with this week's assignment, you're going to probably not care because you're now about to swim into thousands of keywords. And what I want to do next here, just first of all, does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions about no data with Google Trends and seeing how it applies to the LSI graph? They're saving, saying even though a word looks like it's not trendy, would we or they don't exactly how many people search on that or? Uh, yeah, uh, not even necessarily that it's not trending because that still tells us if you can see data, then you should definitely consider that data saying, okay, is this going down, going up? That's what Google Trends is. We're really looking at, is it trending and is there a decent search volume? So when we put in Hawaii Filmmaker, we get there's not enough data. That's what that exercise does, is take your not enough data if you like the keyword, if you're like, oh, we really want Mongolian handmade silk ties, but there's not enough data on that. Then go take it over to Google and put it into Google Suggest and see if there's if it's attached to more keywords than just one or two. If you see a short list, even three, then it's not a very good keyword. Now, I did learn something this week from you guys, and mainly from with what Taffy did on her site. Taffy, share with the class what you learned when you did Google Suggest and Google related keywords with your Chinese website. Are you referring to like the expression, different way that they say it? No, I'm referring to what the reason why we had our meeting, you're saying, hey, I'm seeing something really weird here with Google suggests and Google related keywords. Oh, so I guess for me, in when I do the research in Chinese, somehow the Google relate and Google suggest they are the same. 
And to be honest, I've never seen where suggest and relate are the same because it's pulling from a bigger, a bigger LSI graph. And so those of you that may be working with other languages realize that Google is still very young in your language, more than likely. I can't say that indefinitely, but there's a good chance in Mongolian or in a dialect from India with what Quinny is doing, that there's a good chance you're not gonna get as good of data as those that do it in English. Does that make sense? And so I appreciate Quinny, or not Quinny, Taffy bringing that to my attention because that's not something that I had even thought on because I, I can't speak Chinese or read it. So it wouldn't be something I would have found. So just keep that in mind that things change as you go from different languages, which absolutely makes sense. Okay, and, and the key thing to remember here is let's say Harold did Hawaii videographer, even though all the tools say, hey, there's not a lot of traffic around this, it has a bigger LSI graph. And that's why it's so hard, these tools, even Google and what we're about to do, what I'm about to show you, isn't even that great. It helps you weed out keywords, but in the process, it might help you throw out keywords that are helpful. And there just comes a point where you're like, these are the keywords I'm gonna focus on and I'm gonna do my best and hopefully it fits well into the broader graph of keywords. But I just wanted to throw that out to you on as you're looking at your different keywords from your seed keywords, okay? Most important thing about this assignment will be this video right here. You don't need to necessarily know the link, but I thought I would just share the link if you're watching the video later and you just wanted to pull it. This video by Ahrefs is absolutely going to help you with your homework. You will probably watch it 10 times through to just make sure that you're getting everything out of it. Because what you're going to be doing this week is you're going to be using the Google Keyword Planner to really dig into your seed keywords and also your competitors' keywords. Okay, so I want to just kind of walk you through what it's going to look like for your homework and point out specific areas that a lot of the students last semester that they got tripped up on. And I can't guarantee that this video that right now our Zoom video is going to be live. So definitely ask questions because if my wife goes into labor, you're gonna to have to rely 100% on this video. So if you don't understand, definitely ask. This is a great time to do that, okay? So let's just jump right into that. For this week, you've already done the seed keywords. Now you're going to go on to your keywords, your competitors' keywords, and the selected keywords, okay? And what you're going to do here is you're first going to start off with your seed keywords, and you're going to select your 10 favorite keywords out of your seed keywords. Now, they can all be from the same area, or they can be from the different areas, but you're going to select 10. And the reason for that, let's start at the beginning here, is you're going to come to this page on Google Keyword Planner. And you're going to select Discover New Keywords. And let's just say, for argument's sake, these were, this is right here, these were my top 10 favorite keywords. We're going to throw that into here, okay? And then we're going to say, and if we do over 10, it'll tell us that. Click on get results. Now, this is why last week I shared with you guys, if you said to anyone in SEO that you heavily use Google Keyword Planner, they'd laugh at you because this doesn't tell you a lot about keywords that you really need to do in SEO. It's built for the ads. It's not built for SEO. But if we look here, competition is low, medium, you know, high. That doesn't tell me anything. It used to have 
where it ranked it on a scale of zero to one and it would be like 0 0.034 and you would realize, okay, this is where it falls in and how competitive it is. Again, like average monthly searches, not helpful at all. Now I'm gonna show you a hack that is going to tell you almost exactly how many searches are found on these keywords. So I'm gonna walk you through it and I'm gonna just share with you also just some of the things that the students get tripped up on that you need to be aware of, okay? So starting off, you throw your 10 keywords in. We can see that it, it says there are 1,020 keywords that it has generated off of just those 10 keywords. So now we've got a lot of keywords here. And so we're gonna say, okay, I want to add these keywords into what they call a plan. And it only does 500 keywords. You don't have to do all thousand because you're not going to look through all thousand. But before you do that, my recommendation is to say, okay, we want the high here. So we can see $80. If we went and clicked on blend creative agency in Google, we clicked on the ad, you would have just spent $80 of somebody's money. Okay, but I, so I would first sort it out before you click on keywords here. So click here, or you can also average monthly searches. You can click it here as well. Either one, you're either looking at, I want the one that gets the most searches or the one that gets, that has the highest value. Okay, and then you're going to click on this here and this blue bar is going to pop up. And what I would put in here is just name the plan. You don't have to do this, but if you start doing a lot of these, which you will with this homework, it helps keep it clear. So I could say seed keywords, and I would probably even put top 10 seed keywords. I hit create. And then here, you've got to make sure that it's exact match. It's already on exact match for me because I've been working with this. I can tell very easily if it's not on exact match when you're doing the homework. So click exact match. And what it's saying is we only want you to give us the data on the exact keywords that we've clicked on. Instead of giving us the data on that keyword and all the other relevant keywords for broad match and phrase match. So you click on exact match and then you click on add keywords, okay? When you do that, it says, okay, we're adding your keywords into your plan. And then you're gonna jump over once it's done over to this tab right here, keywords. And on this tab, this is where the hack happens, where we can actually see the data. This right here is the magic where it says $3 max. We're going to click on here. And basically this is telling Google, this is the most I'm gonna pay for a search. And if I paid $3, I can expect to see about 21 clicks. Well, now we're going to say, all right, 999. It says, oh wait, the most you can put in is $100. So now we're maxing it out. We're basically saying, I'm gonna pay for all of the search traffic for this, these keywords. Once you've done that, you come down here and I've, I've clicked on this right here, by the way, columns, just cause it's gonna look different than yours. I hit customize, which basically allows me to, or modify, I should say, allows me to just focus on certain things. I am only focusing on two areas, impressions. Impressions means this is how many people search and saw the ad, which means if we said we're buying all the traffic, that means everybody that has searched this keyword has seen this ad. And then I also only care about the average cost per click. This is what the advertisers are paying on average for this. So I'll just hit apply. You'll see if you don't click on these little bars right here, you'll see a lot of other data. But now guys, for video production, we know that 9,297 point whatever, because they're averaging out, actually search this term each month. 
this data guy, I can't even just tell you how valuable this data is to know the exact search amount. You don't get this with the other tools. The other tools actually come close. You can test them. If you ever want to test SEM rush or Ahrefs, you'll see that it, it gets close. So this data is so, so, so valuable. And then here we can see, okay, video production gets almost 10,000 searches, but we have video animation agency. People pay almost a hundred dollars a click for roughly 18 searches in a month, okay? So these two columns are absolutely essential. Once you have this data, and when you take your screenshot, this is where people lose points. I have to see that you changed the max. If I see $3, I know you didn't change it. And so therefore I know that this is not helpful, okay? So when I'm looking at your screenshots, I need to see this or you won't get credit for the work you've done on this area, okay? So that's the first thing that you'll be looking at. Once you have this, you're gonna go up to this little arrow here and you're going to click on Google Sheets. This is going to download all of the data. Unfortunately, I was hoping that it would download uh, just these two columns. It doesn't. And so you're gonna need to capture that information. So let's open up sheets here. What you're looking for is this, the ad group, the keyword. You don't need the keyword type, so you can delete that out. So we'll just delete this column. You don't need segmented, segmented campaigns, estimated clicks. You do need estimated impressions. So we'll delete out columns I and J. And then you need, let's delete out these two columns. You need estimated average, not average position, excuse me. I think I, oh yeah, right here. So it already deleted, so these, columns right here, ad group, keywords, estimated impressions, estimated average cost, uh, estimated average CPC, okay? You're going to copy, and I would delete, you're going to copy those four columns, but I delete all this information right here. Delete rows one through 13, and now you'll just copy from here over. Everything else you don't need. And I set up your spreadsheets so that you can just drop it in. So I had the name of my, when I did this before, I had it as seed keywords. So when you highlight this right here, I'm going to just drop this in just so you guys can see it. Let me just drop this right here. And you want all the data. Last semester, the students only took the ones they were analyzing. You want all the data you're looking at. So we have this many keywords. I think it's 500 keywords. Now there's two things, Google Sheets. It looks at the impressions and the cost per click. It's weird when you try to sort it. So what you need to do is you're gonna click on this row here and you're gonna go to format. You're gonna go to numbers and even though it says numbers there, it's not doing it. You're going to click plain text, go back, then go to number, and then it should give you where it will sort it really easily from A to Z. So now we can see all these that say there are zero searches on this, and you just delete it out. Even though there might be some keywords here that are very valuable, if people on average are not really searching them, it's just better to weed that out. So you would then delete from there on. So let's do that. So we're going to delete there. Columns two, so 214 or rows just got deleted. And we have here the average cost per click. I like to format this into currency so we can see just how much they're worth, okay? So that's your seed keywords. With your keywords also, it's not just your top 10. You're also going to put your own website into 
Google Keyword Planner. Go ahead, Allison. Um, I'm curious to see how, like, how would you determine which number is more valuable when you're like trying to decide if you want to go after a keyword? So like if it is costing someone 80 bucks to have that keyword and like Cameron said, if you don't care if it's only 17 searches, you can make like whatever thousands of dollars after those few clicks, that's fine. But like, how would you find that line of, we want this amount of traffic and we want it to be this competitive? And that's going to have to fall on you on this, but these other columns here are going to help you determine, by the way, you're not doing, how many keywords do we have here? You're not doing 286 evaluation here. I do suggest looking through a lot of these keywords and then saying, okay, that's a valuable keyword. That's a valuable keyword. So that's the very first thing. It's very relevant to me. That's going to be your very first thing you're going to filter out. And I would take that even over the impressions and over the cost per click. So once you have a good group, you're going to sift out how relevant is it to me? Then you're going to say, okay, the ones that are the most relevant to me, how are they trending? How are they going up? Is this something that I should put my time into? And then we're going to talk about these two here in a minute, your keyword intent, and your search intent. So ultimately to answer your question, Allison, you need to understand how valuable it is to you. So let's say you make a thousand dollars off of that. It might, it will probably be valuable for low volume. That's why people are paying so much for a single click because they're making $5,000 off of that. So if you don't know that data about your business, that's going to make it harder. And then I would say, focus on impressions. So that's how many people have searched. And that's important, guys. Recognize that impressions equals searches, okay? It is how many people have searched. And impressions in digital marketing is generally saying how many people have seen that ad. And we're saying, well, we know for a fact that in order for them to see that ad, they had to search it. And that's why this is such a great hack. So going back to your question, Allison, if you don't know how much you would make off of a product, so let's say with your life coaching, you're not quite sure, okay, that this particular product will bring in this much, I would either say, let's base it off of search or let's base it off of the value for the cost per click or both saying it has high search and high value, which means it'll probably be competitive. Once you've gone through it with moving that data over, you're going to sift through and say, okay, which ones do I really want to evaluate? You only need to evaluate 12. Once you have identified, okay, these are the ones I want to look at, you're going to move them over into here, okay? And you're going to, for your five competitors, you're gonna put all this data in as well. So you're gonna have thousands of keywords. And so you're really gonna to have to start thinking, what are my metrics? I am not asking you to look at thousands of keywords. I am giving you some data points to say, what is really valuable to me? And then move those data points over into your selected keywords. And you have to do everything on all these columns, all the way, even to Jay, putting in some notes saying, you know, this is why this would be valuable. So let's go through each of these columns to make sure you understand exactly what's expected in here. Okay. And I like when Allison had a question, she raised a hand, as you can see, I can, there's a lot of information in here. And so if you have questions, raise your hand, Cameron, jump in. Um, so do we have anything that we can base? So we've got this wonderful keywords, cost per click and stuff. Do we have anything that we can basically go, how competitive is this exact keyword? Yes. And I didn't put it in for a reason. So you can put in page authority and domain authority where of the top ranking keywords. Okay. And so you can then say, okay, the page authority and the domain authority are very strong, so it makes it very competitive. My reasoning for not doing that, and you'll see that in almost every keyword tool that says, this is how competitive it is. I want to encourage you to not care, okay? 
And the reason is if it's insanely competitive, so video production is insanely competitive for Devin, but let's say that is a really important keyword. You would just take the strategy of wrapping it into a long tail keyword. So video production agency 4K. And by wrapping it into a long tail, if you continue to work on that keyword, you will by default work on that competitive keyword. I don't want you to make the mistake to say, hey, that's too competitive. I'm not going to go for it. Now, the mistake you will make is saying that one keyword, when my site is brand new, I'm going to put all my money down on that one keyword and spend the next 10 years trying to get to the top of it. So if you focus on the strategy of long tail mixed in with broad, you shouldn't be afraid of competitive keywords. But fantastic question. If you do want to look at how competitive it is, you are more than welcome to. And I'm glad that Cameron brought it up. I failed to share that last semester that that's something I intentionally have left out because you shouldn't be afraid as long as you're continually working on SEO. Great questions from both Cameron and Allison. Okay, before I go on to the rows, any other questions? Okay, we're going to come back to topic here. Okay, topic is actually pretty easy. You already have impressions, average cost per click. You're familiar with relevance from when you did your seed keywords. Is it high, is it medium, or is it low to you? Is this basically how relevant is it to your website? I would assume after going through and looking at thousands of keywords per se, I'm not again saying go through all of them, but seeing all of this data that it should all be high. Then you're going to do just like you did with C keywords and look at the trend. Is it trending up? Is it trending down? It's okay. It doesn't matter if there's no data. If this is still very relevant to you, keep that keyword. Now let's talk about keyword intent. And your second video in the tutorial talks about keyword intent. And we're really looking at is this keyword a navigational keyword? Basically dealing with brand is, you know, navigational is I type in uh, McDonald's La EA. That's navigational. It's getting me to the McDonald's in La EA. Is this keyword informational? Is it just to help you understand a certain topic? You're trying to better understand SEO. You're not looking to purchase anything. And so you type in, uh, what is SEO? And then finally is transactional. Is this a keyword that people are using to buy something? As you can imagine, that is probably more valuable to you than just navigational brand keywords and even informational, though hopefully you set up your informational to lead to transactional. So I encourage you to not just have transactional keywords. We're gonna talk about here shortly, and you guys have already watched on the HubSpot, the marketing funnel. You need all of these keywords to move people to your final outcome, okay? And then the final thing that you're going to do is you're gonna actually take that keyword, put it into Google, and say, what is the question that Google is trying to answer? So like I said, last semester, I believe Sarah and Cam can correct me, but I believe I had them do 60 of these. Granted, I added in Google Trends, which they didn't do last semester, because I wanted to help you guys see, is this trending up or trending down? But it can take a lot of work. Now, the keyword tools that you pay a lot of money for will take out a lot of this work for you, because we're pulling from lots of different tools because it's free, but it's really good for you because it's helping your mind think, okay, what makes this keyword valuable? Okay, so once you've gone through the 12 keywords, you are going to group them into topics. And I encourage you, in fact, I even require it, I believe in the assignment, you have to have three to four keywords per topic because it's going to help you in next week's assignment as you guys begin to learn on topic clustering. Okay, so I give an example. In fact, I since we're running out of time, let me find that example. It's right here. 
I created a how to do this, what each tab means. Okay. And this was, I'm like, I'm not going to be here with the baby. And I wanted to make sure that you understood how this went. But this last one here, I give an example of a primary keyword idea a video marketing agency 4k and then supportive keywords. And that's what you're really doing here on your topics is you're saying it falls in this topic and these keywords support that main topic. Okay. I know I just talked really fast through all of that guys. What do you feel is the most difficult part of what you need to do on this assignment? Pulling the correct data from Google Keyword Planner. Say that again. Um, pulling out the correct data for, from the Google Keyword Planner. And that's why this video right here from Ahrefs is going to be key because they, they do it. He does it so much better than I do. And this video is just to make sure you don't make the mistakes that others have made in the past. One thing I want to point out here is if you are doing, if you're a location-based company, and I'm trying to think of who we have in the class. Oh, he's looking at keywords that are specific to Hawaii. You need to click on location here and put in Hawaii. So Hawaii, United States. We'll make it so he's just looking at keywords in Hawaii. Now, Quinny, uh, are you still on Quinny? I don't see you. She is, oh yeah, there you are. Thank you, Quinny. She is looking at people traveling from the United States. So you are what is called a localized, com not competitor, a localized site where you have multiple locations all across the United States that could work. So you could say, all right, I'm going to look at New York. I'm going to look at LA and put in this information to see what sort of data I get out of it. Okay, so if I hit save here, one thing that you have to do when you change the location, oh, I guess not. It was generally you have to change this, but it looks like it did it on its own. So I just want to double check. Yep, it did. So just make sure that you've always maxed out the cost per click here. Okay. And then make sure you do all five of your competitors. So, like I said, you'll have thousands of keywords in there. And yeah, so that covers basically the homework. One thing that I want you guys to do, this is the last thing and we'll conclude, is once I get back from us having, well, there's no us. Once I get back from my wife having the baby, I want to meet with every one of you about your website. Now, some of you I've already met. So I've sat down with Taffy, with Cameron, Flora about their website. But if I haven't met with you, Quinny, I've met with you as well. If I haven't met with you one-on-one -on -one as we go through and basically I nitpick at your site and say, okay, here's some areas that you can change, add to. I just met today with Daryl on it and I realized I don't want you to finish this course without meeting with me. And that way you can really get the most out of what you're trying to accomplish. I 100% recognize guys that you're learning SEO at a high level. So when I met with Daryl and I met with Noah earlier last week on his site, I want to really customize your SEO approach so you get the most out of the class. That's the only reason why I want to meet with you. And it's not to say, oh, you're not doing this right or wrong. It is to really just say, these are some of the areas you need to focus on that we may not cover in the class. Okay. So just realize when I get back, I'm going to be pushing you guys to be meeting with me on your website. All right. I will stay on and answer any questions anyone has, but that's all I'm covering for today.